everyone, my name is Jackie. I'm an educator here at Sultana Education Foundation. Today we're going to be learning all about this little buddy, the American Toad. So something you can see that's a little bit different on this little dude right off the bat is that he only has one eye. And I have no idea why that's the case, uh, but he seems to be perfectly healthy other than that. So I'm sure he's living a nice life out in the wild. So this little buddy, like I said, is an example of an American Toad and they're found all throughout the Chesapeake Bay watershed, all the way from New York down to Virginia, back out to West Virginia. Uh, as an adult, they live in all different kinds of natural habitats, but when they're young and for the first part of their life, they live in the water. We're not sure if this is a male or a female because there's no easy way to tell in toad species. In general, the females are bigger than the males, but the only way you can kind of tell for sure is if you have a male and a female of the same age and then whichever one's bigger is most likely the female. So this little buddy eats all different kinds of food. He eats worms and insects and snails and slugs and then other invertebrates. Uh, and then the only main predator species that would eat this little toad are snakes. Uh, and some snakes in particular, like garter snakes, have a special defense where the they're immune to the toxins that are inside the glands on this toad. So the American toad and all toads in general are examples of amphibians, which are the same group of animals as frogs and newts and all types of salamanders. And all amphibians have a few really important things in common. Uh, so first they're ectothermic or cold blooded. That means that if this little toad wanted to get warm, he'd have to go out into the sun, or if he wanted to cool down, he'd have to go find some shade because he can't, he can't control his own body temperature. So second, all amphibians are vertebrates, which means they have a backbone. So just like humans have a spine, uh, this little toad has a backbone that you can't see underneath his skin that helps give his body structure and helps support the toad. Uh, lastly, all amphibians, just like humans, are tetrapods meaning that they have four limbs. In Greek, the word tetra means four and pod means leg or limb. And a fun fact that I just learned is that toads actually have four toes, if you will. See, one, two, three, four on their front limbs and then six on their back limbs. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. That little one also counts. What makes amphibians really unique and special compared to other animals, however, uh, is their life cycle. So as you can see on this picture, uh, they start off as eggs in fresh water and they eventually grow into a larger embryo, which is a smaller version of a tadpole. Eventually they're gonna hatch uh, and become a tadpole and use gills to breathe oxygen out of the water the same way a fish would. During the course of its life as a tadpole, skin is gonna grow over the gills Eventually, it's going to start to grow hind legs and then eventually front legs as well. And then it's also going to start growing lungs, which are going to allow it to live on land uh, as an adult version of a toad. You can see in this picture, uh, the, the tail is almost completely gone. And eventually, as the adult version, the tail is going to be completely shortened. Uh, and there's no evidence that this creature ever lived in the water. So this entire process is called metamorphosis and it's really unique to the life cycle of an amphibian. A really cool adaptation uh, that they have when they're embryos inside of the eggs is a really cool thing called countershading, which Chris talked about when he was looking at hog chokers. So countershading is when you're darker on the top. So if you're an, if you're an animal looking down, it's, it blends in with the water. But then if you're an animal that's in the water looking up, the embryo inside the egg is gonna be lighter in color to blend in with the sun. And actually the adult version of the toad does this too. So if you look at our adult version of the toad here, if this little buddy were to be in the water and if you were to look down, you would notice how much darker in color he is and that's to blend in with the dark water. But if you were a creature looking up and it was really bright and sunny, the toad is gonna to be lighter at the bottom. And this helps it blend in with the bright sky. So this is called counter shading. So some people out there might be wondering, hey, how can you tell frogs and toads apart? I mean, they do look pretty similar. Uh, well, good news is there are a few tricks you can use. So first, as this picture shows really well, uh, frogs generally have longer legs, uh, much longer than their head and body, which are made for hopping. Sorry, I don't have an actual frog to compare it to. 
Uh, whereas toads, on the other hand, have shorter legs and prefer to crawl around rather than hop. As you can see with our buddy here, his legs, while they are long, are definitely not longer than its body. So this little friend is definitely built for crawling rather than hopping around. So the second way you can tell frogs and toads apart is that in general, the skin on a frog is a lot smoother and a bit slimier whereas toads have this dry, kind of bumpy skin. Uh, and by the way, you cannot get warts from a toad. Uh, what looks like warts, uh, these bumps are actually glands that contain toxins that the animal can release to defend itself. So the last way you can tell frogs and toads apart that I heard at nature camp when I was a kid is kind of funny actually. Uh, apparently, toads are way more likely to pee on you when you pick them up. Uh, and this is a way of self-defense. Trust me when I say this toad peed quite a bit on me earlier, so can confirm that is one way that you could use to tell them apart. So thank you for hanging out with us today. I hope you all learned something new about toads. Uh, make sure you get outside, enjoy the spring weather, and see what totally awesome creatures you can find uh, just in your backyard or in your neighborhood in general. Uh, and come back and check us out at Sultana's Virtual Classroom.